For this video, we are going to be solving a perfect complements consumer optimal choice problem. So let's begin. So we have a, this consumer called Alona. Alona consumes two goods, sugar and iced tea. Alona has a very discriminate taste and will only enjoy her beverage if it has two teaspoons of sugar per glass of iced tea. Find Alona's utility function. So let's find Alona's utility function. I'm going to show you how to find the utility function. Um, I'm going to show you a foolproof way of finding the utility function for a perfect complement problem every single time. If you follow these steps, no matter what kind of goods you're solving for, you will always be able to find the utility function for a perfect complement. Okay? So follow these steps and you will always be correct. So let's find the utility function, okay? So we have two types of goods here, right? Uh, we have, okay, sugar, okay, perfect, and we have iced tea, perfect. So sugar and iced tea, so we're representing sugar with S, we are representing tea, tea, iced tea with tea. So according to Alona, she will only enjoy her beverage if she has two teaspoons of sugar per glass of iced tea. Okay? So two represents S and one represents T. Perfect. That's what we need to know. Now, we are going to equate S equals to T. And we're going to write a small K just before S, okay? And now we're going to substitute the values for S and T. And we got these values, um, as you know, we got them from here. Okay. From here. Okay. That's where we got those values. Now we're going to solve for K. So in order to solve for K, we need to divide, divide both sides of the equation by 2. So K equals 1 half. Now, now that we know what K is, we're going to plug K, the value of K, okay? We're going to plug it back into this equation, okay? So let's rewrite it. So small k s equals to t, right? We know the value of k, we just found that out, so it is one half. S equals to t. Now, we had this fraction here. We had this fraction, and we really don't like fractions for our perfect complements uh, utility function. So we're going to solve for s, so that way we, you know, we get rid of that fraction. So let's do that, okay? So let's rewrite this again. 1 half s equals to t. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. This cancel. We're left with s equals to 2t. Okay? Perfect. And guess what? Now we know our perfect complement utility function. Okay? Our utility function is as follows. minimum s to t and guess what that's our utility function perfect it is too easy you know I make this microeconomics too easy now if you follow these steps you will always be able to find the utility function for a perfect complement no matter what good it is. It might be good X, it might be good Y, or it might be a bike, it might be two wheels in one frame. It doesn't matter. If you follow this step, you'll always find the utility function for a perfect complement. Now, let's move on to the second part of this problem. Now, it says if a loan has $4 to spend, sugar costs 5 cents per teaspoon, and iced tea costs 15 cents per glass. What is her optimal basket? 
okay let's find that out let's let's scroll down here so we can get some more space uh, we want space here so we can solve this problem okay so perfect so now we need the first step is to write the budget line remember the budget line the standardized form the budget line is px times x py times y equals m px stands for the price of uh, good x and py stands for the price of good y and m stands for income but now in this problem we don't have x or y instead we have s and t so instead of using x and and y we're going to be using s and t but it's going to be under the same standardized form so we got price of sugar ps times s pt times t equals m as you can see it's the same standardized form but instead of using x good x and good y we're using good s and good t so we already know the price of uh, sugar uh, the price of ps the price of ps is 0 0.05 times s and we already know the price of iced tea the price of iced tea is 0 0.15 times t and we know the income i know that alona has a uh, four dollar to spend so let's write that down perfect so now we have our budget line this is our budget line okay perfect now remember from our utility function according to our utility function s equals to 2t and guess what we got an s here in our budget line so s equals to 2t we're gonna plug that in into s over here see that so we're gonna substitute s with 2t so let's do that so let's rewrite our utility function our budget line one more time 0 5 s equals to 2t plus 0 1 5 t equals to 4 okay now we are gonna be solving for t let's solve for t okay so uh, 0 0.01 I'm sorry 0 0.05 times 2 how much is that 0 0.10 times t plus 0 0.15 times t equals 4 now we have like terms right uh, both of these terms are like the same so we're gonna add them up so the addition is 0 0.25 t equals 4 excellent now we're still solving for t now the next step to solve for t is to divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 and t equals to 16 perfect and that happens to be our optimal demand for t okay now remember here uh, remember this uh, equation here s equals to 2t guess what we just found t now all we need to do to find s is plug the value of t into here so let's do that okay so so s equals 2 to t we just found the value of t so we're gonna plug that in 16 so s equals 232 and guess what that's our optimal demand for sugar okay so we have our optimal demand for sugar and optimal demand for t our optimal demand for sugar is 32 and optimal demand for tea is 16 and that's our optimal basket for our lona and we just solve a perfect complement consumer optimal choice problem for microeconomics
See, it's not that complicated. Some people make it too complicated, but these problems are so easy to solve. We found the utility function, and if you follow the steps to find the utility function, you always find the utility function. Sometimes the microeconomics professor will give you the utility function, that makes it easy for you. Sometimes they don't give you the utility function, you need to find the utility function. But if you find, if follow my steps, you will always find the utility function. It's not that complicated. So, that's the end of the problem. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe. I'm going to be making more videos about microeconomics. I'm going to show you that microeconomics is fun, it's easy, it's not complicated. So, enjoy. Have a great day.